Hi there, AP Psych friends. We are now in Unit 3, Biological Basis of Behavior. Uh, this unit makes up 8 to 10 percent of the overall multiple choice questions on the AP test, and so we will uh, definitely be spending uh, some significant time in this unit. Um, your textbook uh, is handy in that it has divided this unit up for us into three sections, and so we will begin with the basic units, um, and that is neural processing. And so let's take a look here at the neuron. Okay, um, and so biological psychology to review from unit one would be the branch that would be dealing with uh, these sorts of things. And our neuron is just a, a nerve cell. So this is going to be the basic building block of our nervous system. There are three different types of neurons that exist. And so let's take a look at, at what each of those does. All right, so your sensory neurons are going to be the nerve cells that carry information from our senses uh, to the brain and spinal cord, or they're taking information from the senses to the central nervous system. Um, after that, uh, motor neurons are going to be the uh, nerve cells that carry information away from the central nervous system or from the brain and spinal cord and take it to uh, whatever part of the body needs the message, whether it be muscles, glands, or organs. Interneurons are going to be nerve cells that exist within the central nervous system. And so interneurons are going to be in your brain and spinal cord. And what they are doing is communicating um, and intervening with messages. And so um, sensory neurons bring the, bring the input. Interneurons decide which motor neurons need that information um, to produce the output. And so if you look at my analogy uh, that I remember this is that this is like a subway system and our sensory neurons are the inbound trains. Uh, the interneurons are going to be the little uh, switchboard centers that, that move our subway trains f uh, onto different tracks or, or move the message to different tracks. And then our motor neuron are those outbound trains. If the trains are the information, um, sensory, motor, and inter um, tend to uh, work in that type of way. Okay, um, a, another cell that is worth mentioning that is not specifically a nerve cell are, are what is what is known as a glial cell. Okay, a, a glial cell is just going to be a, a helper cell. And what these cells do is... Um, actually help neurons communicate. And so um, I'm jumping a bit ahead, but if you look at the diagram on the right, you'll see uh, a component of a neuron known as the myelin sheath. So know that glial cells are going to make that outer covering of the axon um, for the neuron. So they're you know not a neuron, but important concerning communication in the nervous system. All right, so speaking of the diagram at the right, let's take a look at the different parts of a neuron. Now, some of these I'm not going to spend a lot of time on in that people, you took um, a biology class at some point, I'm sure. And so you remember, when we talk about cells, we can talk about the outer membrane or the outer layer of the cell, the cell body, which provides nutrients for the cell the command center of a cell known as the nucleus. And then uh, not we haven't zoomed in enough on our picture on the right to see them, but you'll remember that mitochondria are the actual components of a cell that turn glucose and oxy oxygen into energy for the cell. And so, um, yeah, re think back to biology class. Neurons are cells, so they have those components as well. So what are the parts of a neuron that make it a special cell or a nerve cell. Um, dendrites. You can see those. I like to use the analogy of a neuron type kind of looking like a tree. And so the dendrites are going to be your branches. They catch or receive messages that are being sent from other neurons. Okay. The axon is uh, like the trunk um, of the neuron. And so what it is doing is sending the message to other neurons. And you can see there on, on the um, explanation or on the diagram there that we have axon terminal, right? And so the axon kind of branches out at the bottom, somewhat like roots on a tree. And those axon terminals um, 
are going to be uh, what send the message to the uh, n receiving neuron. Uh, the myelin sheath is that fatty outer covering of the axon. Uh, its purpose is to speed up transmission. Um, neurons communicate using electrochemical signals, and so those dendrites have received a, a chemical uh, called a neurotransmitter um, that is going to um, convert that into electrical energy, uh, which is what runs down the axon and allows the axon terminals to release uh, that same chemical that was received by the dendrite. And so a uh, myelin sheath uh, kind of slicks up the axon and allows for uh, faster transmission. The synapse isn't actually something that we can see unless I had showed you um, two nerve cells. And so the synapse is, is not an actual thing that per se, it's really the space between uh, neurons. And so neurons, uh, like the dendrites and axon terminals of, of neurons don't touch one another. This is actually good um, in that it allows for uh, faster transmission and that um, a, a nerve cell can have con connections I'm using finger quotes, you can't see them, but connections uh, with uh, lots of other neurons, whereas if they actually were physically connected, um, it would be like this big game of telephone, and we all know how well communication happens in, in that game. So it's good that that's not the case. So communicating with multiple neurons simultaneously as a result of the space between neurons. Um, some things that were not mentioned in Myers that I will make it a point to mention in class for our friends not watching videos. Uh, the nodes of Ranvier, which you can see actually labeled on the diagram, is just really a space or a gap in the myelin sheath. Uh, the purpose of it is to keep the electrical charge going. So the myelin sheath is good as the in that it speeds up the transmission, but if, if the axon was completely covered in myelin sheath, um, the strength of the signal might uh, weaken. And so every once in a while we kind of uh, expose the wire, so to speak, to allow uh, the charge to, to stay strong. Um, we c we're not zoomed in enough to see this, but within our neuron is going to be uh, what's known as the sodium-potassium pump. Um, it's called sodium-potassium pump, uh, if you remember from chemistry class, um, because those are the primary elements present in ion exchange. And so it's going to bring positive ions in and pump them out when an action is done. Uh, stay tuned uh, for future slides that explain that in more detail. Um, the receptor are actually going to be areas on the dendrite uh, where neurotransmitters fit. A and the beauty of this is that only certain neurotransmitters fit in certain receptor sites on those dendrites. And so the analogy is like a key into a lock. Um, that's how the nerve cell knows what the message is that it's receiving, is that uh, it will only fit on a specific receptor site, and that's what allows uh, the, m the electrochemical uh, signal uh, to alert the axon terminals uh, what message needs passed on. Um, and so at the other end of the neuron, on those axon terminals, if we were to zoom in, we would see uh, vesicles, which are actually on those terminal buttons. Um, that's where vesicle sacs are where the neurotransmitters are stored. And so those are going to be how communication occur, and, and they're stored in the, the senders or the axon terminals. Okay, so um, let's talk about the process now that you know the components. Okay, and so when we talk about how uh, neurons send messages to other neurons, there are a couple of, of new vocab words we should be familiar with. Okay, Accent, uh, action potential is going to be uh, the brief electrical charge that travels down the axon. All right, so how does this work? All right, well ions um, in are in and around this neuron, right? And so these ions either have a positive or a negative charge. And when um, the particles move, it creates uh, this electrical charge or action potential, okay? And so if you remember from science class, there's a natural tendency for ions to move from more crowded to less crowded areas. And so um, neurons are... are normally packed with lots of negative ions, and, th and there's a bunch of positive ones on the outside. Let me in, let me in. And so uh, the membrane of, th of the neuron cell uh, is, 
um, is impermeable, but the neurotransmitters or those messages weaken it, which allow the ions to move um, according to the principle, right, uh, that we mentioned above, okay? So it's, it's absolutely amazing in that the, you know, once that membrane is weakened and we have this movement of ions, um, that firing uh, happens like in a thousandth of a second. Um, so it's, it's really amazing at how quickly that works. Um, and so that's called action potential. Uh, that's how it's working like on the scientific level. Um, some things to remember about action potential is that it is an all or none response um, that is sometimes called the threshold of a neuron. Okay, there has to be enough movement of ions to generate firing, or it's not going to happen. Right, the activity has to reach a specific threshold. So we'll do some practice with that uh, in class. Okay. Uh, know that a neuron also has what's known as a refractory period. And that just means that there's a short rest between the firing of neurons um, and that it cannot, um, you know, rapidly fire uh, two signals in a row. And so there's that, there's that naked baby in front of the toilet again. Uh, so why am I recycling clip art? Um, the refractory period and the all or none principle are well explained using the analogy of a toilet, right? You can't just kind of flush a toilet, right? You ha the threshold or the pressure on the handle has to be enough to make it flush um, or it doesn't flush. And um, then we have to wait for the tank to fill up uh, on our toilets at home. And so I like to think of that as an, a good analogy for the refractory period. Okay, uh, reuptake is another uh, principle that it's important to understand. Um, and reuptake is just a neurotransmitter's reabsorption by the sending neuron. And so when those axon terminals send out the message, um, the reuptake uh, is any extra of those neurotransmitters hanging out in the synaptic gap get sucked back in by the vesicles of the sending neuron. Right, so nothing's wasted. That's nice. Um, Postsynaptic potential. These are, are, are concepts that we just talked about concerning action potential, um, but weren't necessarily the technical verbiage that Myers t wanted to get into. But I have seen some questions that specifically mention EPSP and IPSP, so I wanted to mention them to you. And so when we talk about this uh, postsynaptic potential, that's just um, the change um in the membrane of a neuron that's received the message and so was this enough of a neurotransmitter to weaken that membrane enough to get uh the action potential going right to get those ions exchanging um and so um when we say excitatory postsynaptic potential or epsp we're saying that the, it is depolarized which means that there is an increased chance of action potential there's an increased chance that the neuron is going to uh take action um ipsp or inhibitory uh postsynaptic potential just means that it's hyperpolarized and so that decreases the chance of action potential Okay, and so whether or not um, a neuron fires and how rapidly it fires depends on at that given moment, were there more excitatory uh, than inhibitory movements, right? Was there more uh, gas than break if we're, you know, to make it go? And so know that neurons are always active, right? They're constantly integrating and processing the messages they receive, but they're not always necessarily sending that message on to any other neuron, right? It has to be enough of the message to generate um, action or to reach that threshold. Okay, and so we'll practice that process in class. Okay, so I keep mentioning these neurotransmitters. Um, those are going to be specific uh, chemical messengers that are um, sent, uh, that are the senders of the message. And so those are going to be things that um, we will discuss. There's some different types of neurotransmitters that I want to cover in class, some of them not covered in, in, in Myers. And so there are your basics concerning uh, neural communication.
Uh, bring your questions to class, and thanks for listening.